Serial entrepreneur Mikhail Kokorik, dubbed Russia's Elon Musk by his PR team, says his new business, Destinus, is developing a hydrogen-powered, zero-emissions transcontinental delivery drone capable of Mach 15 travel speeds. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, Elon Musk Evolution, where we tell you all the latest news about Elon Musk and his multi-billion dollar companies. According to Destinius, this hyperplane would combine the technological advance of a space plane with the simple physics of a glider to create a vehicle that meets the demand of a hyper-connected world. Using clean liquid hydrogen fuel to transport cargo between Europe and Australia in just a few hours, the hyperplane is a fully autonomous vehicle, which would take off from ordinary airport runways and travel leisurely to the coast before accelerating to supersonic speeds. Kokorek indicated in an interview with Drone Talks that this would be accomplished through the help of a drone, first stage air turbo rocket engine, which is, I would say, a known technology. It would then fire its second stage, a rocket engine, to reach hypersonic speeds of Mach 13 to Mach 15 at heights of over 50 kilometers or 160,000 feet, where air resistance is considerably decreased. The logic is simple, said Kokorek. If you want to move something from one place on Earth to another place on Earth, you need to spend energy in several directions. One, you need to overcome gravity as long as you're keeping the plane in the air. So longer means more gravity losses. Second is against the friction of the air. And the third is for your maximum velocity kinetic energy. He believes that they need to accelerate their vehicles to a very high velocity using the rocket engine. He added, as a result, we must expend more energy in order to accelerate. Our gravity losses and aerodynamic losses are incredibly minimal since we are flying 10 times faster at extremely high altitudes, where there is more than 10 times less air than at 10 kilometers or 33,000 feet. As a result, it begins to appeal to a wide range of people. Actually, we can transport goods from here to another continent for less money than we can with regular flights. It may appear weird, but it isn't. We simply expend less energy for this purpose. One key step, according to Kokorik, will be the development of a rocket engine that is nearly as reusable as a jet engine, as well as a hydrogen cooling system that can keep the aircraft structure from melting under the dozens of megawatts per square meter of power. The amount of heat produced by hypersonic vehicles pushing through even low-density air at mesospheric altitudes. The initial plan, according to Kokor, is to move urgent, high-value premium cargo, medical deliveries, secure documents, critical infrastructure parts, but this will be phased out over time. Amazing Mediterranean tuna will be available in Japanese restaurants as fresh as if it had just been caught and at the same price. Kokor claims that by flying so high in the mesosphere, the hydroplane will produce 10 times less sonic boom noise. The Stennis claims to have opened four offices in Spain, France, Switzerland, and Germany, as well as raising some substantial funds to get started. But that will require much more. According to a company blog post, the capital requirements are massive. Before Destinus becomes profitable, Kokork predicts that he will require more than a billion francs. The company's initial round of funding, worth $11 million, was accomplished in one day, with only a few presentation slides required by the investors, the majority of whom knew Kokork from past ventures. The company anticipates a second $25 million investment coming in just as easily. The site says, it's a tremendous bet Kokorik is making with enormous potential and uncertain possibilities of success. The business claims that just four months after launching, it has already flown its first prototype, the Jungfrau, and displayed it in a video on LinkedIn. The five-minute test flight took place near Munich and focused on how the hypersonic aeroshape will perform at low speeds during critical takeoff and landing stages. As a result, the Jungfrau, which is about the size of a vehicle, was limited to speeds of less than 150 kilometers an hour, or 93 miles per hour, and a height of less than 20 meters, or 66 feet. According to Destinus, the second one will be ready in early 2022 and will be the size of a bus. Let's slam on the brakes for a while, because there are lots of major butts here for Sir mix to pass his golden years in a country of wealth. The first is that the Jungfrau prototype, which resembles another concept, the LAPCAT MR 2.4 hypersonic cruiser concept, which was developed as part of an EU research initiative and is the topic of the Horizon 2020 Stratofly feasibility study. Mind you, the MR 2.4 was supposed to be a 300-seat passenger airliner. 
Jungfrau, according to Destenes, uses an aeroform based on hypersonic design. Therefore, this design isn't entirely unique. But why develop a prototype? The size of the vehicle, no less, that isn't representative of the plane you're planning to build. In the approaching intense test effort, what exactly will be tested? What engines is it based on? We think they are jet turbines, but we can't find any film of an air turbo rocket to compare them with. That's most likely because, while they may be a well-known technology, as Kokorik claims, they haven't quite caught on yet. I can only say this, said Matt Thomas of CFD Research Corporation, who has worked on designs for both AMCOM and CFD, and has spent more than 30 years researching, designing, and producing air turbo rockets. I obviously don't know the literature day to day, but many different people have looked at derivatives that could be considered related to the air turbo rocket. The English have done some things, the Russians have done a few things. I've never seen it hit Paydark, where you're seeing them flying on a day-to-day -day mission. That isn't to say it won't happen in the future, especially with hydrogen as the fuel. The Japanese did a fantastic job on the hydrogen fuel regeneration ATR, Thomas remarked. They were able to get it to work fairly well, but that's about the most straightforward propellant you'll come across. A hydrogen regen ATR might be set up by anyone. It's not that difficult, so in a nutshell, it's doable, but no one has yet succeeded in commercializing it, and it's likely to be a huge roadblock. And then there's Cochran. He appears to have some business and aerospace expertise, having founded dozens of businesses, including Duria Aerospace, Russia's first private microsatellite producer, and Momenta Space, a Y Combinator graduate turning SPAC listed companies committed to space last mile deliveries. However, it's become increasingly difficult to locate a mention of his name that isn't tied to some sort of issue. For example, the SEC claims that Kokorik and the Momentus team misled to the firm about its unique water-based propulsion technology, claiming that it had been successfully tested in space, although the single space-based test had failed. According to Tech Times, he is an unscrupulous entrepreneur who always seems to be in trouble with the U.S. officials and has been repeatedly refused by U.S. officials as a potential national security danger due to some of his business relationships in the old country. As a result, he had to leave as CEO of Momentus, and he is no longer permitted to know about the technology that his own business is developing. Kokorik has explanations, and Europe is in America, and he's surrounded by a lot of smoke. Then there's the concept of hypersonic delivery plane itself. Hypersonic aircraft are not only extremely difficult to manufacture, but anything flying at that speed carries enough kinetic energy to serve as a lethal weapon. As our very own David Sanzi pointed out in his great 2017 exploratory post on hypersonics, the kinetic force of hypersonic projectile can give it the punch of a small tactile nuclear weapon without an ounce of explosives aboard. Small wonder the U.S. Air Force called an 80s project to drop tungsten arrows from space, rods from God. Zeus didn't have such thunderbolts. All that speed and all that inertia turns any research platform, recon unit, or passenger aircraft into a potential kinetic weapon. They don't need high explosives to destroy a target. All they have to do is hit it. In other words, any hypersonic vehicle is an intrinsic weapon given the proper modifications. Do these worries imply that Destinus is doomed to fail? Not necessarily, but it's a long shot at best. Just like any commercial hypersonic enterprise, even giving a supersonic civilian aircraft project off the ground is extremely tough, as well-funded and well-connected startup Arion recently discovered. That is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts? Tell us in the comments section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.